there goes the unscripted part of this review. You see, well, I decided to start doing a script because my last review was all like, not reviewy. It was more like a list of features than a real review. So, guess what? We're going to review things with a script. Bum, bum, bum. So, if you somehow did not read the title of this video, we are reviewing the new 3DS XL. Because that's the only new 3DS that we got here in the States. And so we really need to ask this question, how new is the new 3DS? I know it's kind of like asking Shulk how much he's feeling it, but it's actually a very, very important question when it comes to reviewing the new 3DS. So what's the biggest feature of the 3DS? Well, 3D, of course, it's like in the name, but because of stereoscopic 3D, it wasn't exactly complete when the 3DS launched back when it first launched and there was problems with the effects where it would break and distort if you weren't in the exact spot that you needed to be making the 3d a novelty one that you would turn off after a while to actually play the games and I actually played it in 3d for a while it's a shame that it didn't work as well as it should have because it was like amazing when it worked now, the new 3DS fixes that exact problem. It uses something called face tracking to adjust the 3D effect to make it match your position. And it works really, really well. I found that I played most of the new 3DS with the face tracking 3D on. And you know what? I didn't have to adjust the system that much at all. In fact, the sweet spot was pretty much always in my face. And I was pleasantly surprised to see how well it worked in darkness. And what's amazing about this is that for the first time ever, the 3DS can actually like be a 3D system and it works extremely well. The only time I had a problem was when I looked away and it was looking for my face. And so there was a little bit of fuzziness when I looked back at it, but it fixed itself extremely quickly. Another new feature is the C stick. And a lot of people have been asking for this. Well, not exactly in this way. They've been asking for a second circle pad because they want to do two stick shooter type stuff on their 3DS. Uh, for some reason, Nintendo went with the C stick, likely structural integrity, or there was some type of cramp conflictingness on the inside of the system. And the C stick, or the nub as I like to call it, is not exactly a two stick solution. In fact, it works really well for left and right camera motions, but when you start to incorporate up and down, it gets a little fuzzy. In fact, for some strange reason, up and down motions are just not as sensitive as they need to be. And so, even though some games claim they have calibration, you can't really calibrate them to your exact preferences. And it sucks because the C-Stick is actually really fun to use. It doesn't actually move and it's kind of hard to explain, but it works really, really well for left and right or smash attacks. Oh my God, does it work for smash attacks so well. It like rivals the GameCube controller on how easy it is to do a smash attack with it. For two stick shooters or shooters in general, it kind of sucks. Like I did uh, Ironfall, which is this free demo, free start thing on the Nintendo eShop and it's a third person shooter and it just it was really hard to get used to it was playable it just wasn't the best solution out of everything in fact I actually would have preferred a lock-on system because that would have been a little bit nicer than the c-stick so the c-stick is not the only input that has been added to the system there's actually a second set of bumpers that line up behind the bumpers that existed on the system now a lot of people were like, why didn't they just stack them? I'm guessing again, structural integrity wise, it would have made the system much thicker and would have been actually very difficult to play effectively. In fact, actually their solution is perfect. Um, unlike the C-Stick, it's not, it's not difficult to use these buttons. In fact, it's really interesting. Uh, I preferred using them. What they did was they made them a separate shape and they rose them up a bit so that it's actually still possible to play by touch, which is important when you're doing hardcore gaming sessions in the dark with your headphones on, which I do all the time. And I found that they worked pretty reasonably. In fact, in Smash Bros, I was able to switch between grabbing and blocking flawlessly on them. And that's something to say when a control scheme is different yet still perfect and that's what makes it so amazing and 
I actually really like it. In fact, I find that this setup works perfectly on a portable system. So Nintendo has talked about how this system is more powerful, and this power is noticeable only in new games. Why? Because the old games can't actually take advantage of it, they weren't coded to do so. Hypothetically they can patch the old games to do so, but I'm guessing that a lot of these companies really don't want to do that. So is there a notable difference? Yes, there is, in the games that use it. Monster Hunter and Super Smash Bros. 4 for the 3DS both utilize the new power of the system. In fact, Monster Hunter, I played it on my old console and it felt a little sluggish. In 3D, it just like, the frame rates were dipping. It was not very enjoyable. It definitely felt very deliberate. And then on Smash Bros, I would start up the game, go make some coffee, maybe eat some breakfast, and then finally the game would come up or something like that. Maybe just possibly a little bit come up. And so, the new 3DS, once you put Monster Hunter in, oh my god, it feels like an action game. Like, ah, it, it's beautiful. I, I found myself vaulting off of edges at like amazing frame rates in 3D, and I love it. Smash Bros. runs so smoothly, I actually like playing it portably again. Uh, after I got the Wii U version, I stopped playing it portably altogether. Now I play it portably again because it just works so well. And there's no dips, and it's amazing. This new power is pretty obvious when it comes to games that can use it. The system itself actually went with some serious redesigns. Uh, around the hinge areas, it's thicker plastic, and it's even stronger plastic than before. Uh, the cartridge slot has actually been moved to the bottom of the system and it's actually inside of it. If you feel around it, it's not completely flush to the system, so it's not that easy to unclick. And the SD card slot has actually been moved inside the system, fixing all those problems. And then the thing where I was talking about damaging your screen, they added extra bumper space on the 3DS so that it doesn't scratch the screen. I've been carrying this thing around like crazy and I haven't damaged it yet, which is awesome. And so, overall, the quality of the system feels better. Now, there are some negatives to what they did to change the system. They switched the SD card to a micro SD card, so your old SD card will not work with the system. And if you have a large SD card, then replacing it will be annoying and expensive. Also, it is slightly larger than the old 3DS, so it's slightly less portable, and it's a little bit heavier, making it oh, generally a little bit less portable than the old XLs. But those are pretty much the only negatives with the redesign. So now we can finally answer that question, how new is the new 3DS? Well, it's actually just new enough but not so new that it's a mandatory upgrade. As suggested, if you got a 3DS, you don't need to upgrade, but if you want to replace that system, you can. And this is actually a way for Nintendo to buy time. They're actually going to be able to put this out and have it be a placeholder until they're ready for their next system, which I'm guessing they're going to tie closer to their console launch, that way they could have them all at once. Pretty awesome. But Nintendo's next portable system that will replace this might be four years off, because the new 3DS seems to be extending the life of the 3DS. <laughs> Point is, it's just 100% better than the old one. Everything that was a flaw in the old one has been fixed. I definitely give it two thumbs up and say go for it if you can well thank you guys for watching this video if you enjoyed watching this video you can tell me about it in the commenty comment section yeah i still call it the commenty comment section or you can join the kawaii revolution it sounds so dark for something so adorable either way click the pie go back to our channel and hit that subscribe button and you will be able to join the kawaii revolution yeah you can also give us a thumbs upy thingy the thumbs upy thingies are cool and just, yeah so i thank you guys again also there's this video over here this is the last animation i did on the channel um and you can click this video 
And it's me talking about the Nintendo NX. So, two interesting videos that you can watch right now. So I thank you guys again. Wolfie, out.